Welcome to Intro to Control as part of our QSC Quantum Training and Advanced Service and Troubleshooting Curriculum. My name is Patrick Hine, and today we're going to go deep on control. Before we start, I highly recommend you complete Control 101 and Control 201. Like I said, this is going to get really detailed really fast. So do your homework first. Let's start with some basics. Control can be as simple as GPIO for controlling devices such as microphones. We press a button on a microphone when we want to mute it, and then press it again when you want to unmute. GPIO can also control the LED on that microphone to show red for muted and green for unmuted. Then we have QSIS native control with our touchscreens and user control interfaces that can be included as part of the control system. QSIS can also receive incoming control from third-party control systems such as Crestron, AMX, Extron, and other devices that can be a part of the design. And finally, we have outgoing controls from QSIS to other devices. Once our system receives control signals from these methods, then we can have programming compromise of simple control components, plugins, or scripts provide the functionality we need. Our objectives for these videos will be to take a look at these different control methods with a little bit more detail, see how they're applied, and then provide some basic troubleshooting guidelines. Let's start with control signals in and out of QSIS. These signal types include Ethernet, GPIO, and RS-232 or Serial. With Serial connections, QSIS provides bi-directional RS-232 ports on either a Phoenix connector or a DB-9 style connector just like the Data Terminal Equipment, or DTE, connection on a PC. If your design requires a different type of serial connection, such as an RS-485 or RS-422, then we typically recommend you go with an Ethernet-based third-party control device. Serial connections on IO-22s and most QSIS cores have a DB9 male DTE connector. When connecting a DCE device with a female connector, a male-to-female straight-through cable can be used. When connecting QSIS to another DTE male connection, then we will need a female-to-female -female crossover or a null modem cable. Other serial connectors on QSIS devices, such as the IO8 Flex and the Core 110F, have a 3-pin Phoenix connector, so for troubleshooting purposes, this makes it a lot easier if we need to swap to transmit-receive connectors. So, pop quiz! Do QSIS serial ports support flow control? Here's a hint. There are two types of flow controls. One is hardware-based. And as I mentioned earlier, we only use transmit, receive, and ground connections, and not the additional RS-232 pins required for flow control. So, no on hardware-based flow control. And while it could be possible technically to code some sort of Lua script flow control, there's no native support for software-based flow control. So, in order to add a serial control to your design, you will need to add the serial port component of the QSIS device from your inventory to the schematic and create one, and only one, connection to the control component that will run on the core. Remember, you cannot daisy chain RS-232 signals. In this example design, if you open a command button component, you can see our serial port configuration of 96, 8, none, and 1. This is a very common serial port configuration. In this case, 9600 refers to the baud rate. We have 8 data bits, no parity represented by the N, and 1 stop bit. So, if we look at the data flow of this serial signal at the bottom, we start at idle with the transmit pin held high. Then the start bit goes low, and then we see the waveform for this piece of data followed by the stop bit as a high. For the next transmission, we see the stop bit again, and this pattern will continue for every character of the string to be sent out. So, in our example, the first byte of our transmission is 08 hex. This is literally what the signal would look like from position D0 to D7 for our 8 data bits. Since we are configured for 8 data bits, we know that when we start the start bit, to look at the 8 data bits at 96 baud rate speed, then we have to have our stop bit, then we see the start bit for the next order to signal the start of the second data transmission, etc. 
Now, if we employ parity in our serial signal, typically we would see one less data bit to follow our parity bit. So, it reduces the number of actual data bits to 7. In our example, we have even parity. So, if the sum of our data bit is odd, then my parity bit goes high to make our data bit sum an even number. If our parity bit it was set to odd, the parity bit would be low to produce a sum that is odd. The most common serial configuration is 8, none, and 1, but in rare cases, parity may be required. Since QSIS doesn't support serial control from third-party devices natively, we need to add this functionality to our QSIS design. To do this, we need to add a serial to TCP script to the schematic. Then we will need to connect that script to the QSIS device's serial connection. Since this control utilizes a script, keep in mind that a scripting license will be required. Alright, that seems like a good place to stop. When we get back, we'll open up QSIS Designer software and show you how to configure Serial Communication GPIO in QSIS. See you then!